Hello guys! Welcome sa ating Zinanage TV. Okay. So, in this video, uh, we will discuss about the two-input multiplexer design using Domino Logic CMOS. So, lahat ng ito ay pag-aaralan natin dito sa ating tutorial. Pero, before tayo mag-start, don't forget to like this video and click the subscribe button para ma-notify kayo sa mga next videos. So, let's get started. So, in static CMOS, uh, we use a uh, pull-down network made up of PMOS. So, as PMOS has larger size, higher load capacitance, and slower switching speed, we use dynamic CMOS. So, but in dynamic CMOS, there are issues of cascading. So, the solution to cascading problem can be done by domino CMOS. So, wherein we will discuss it in this video. So, first, let's define what is multiplexer. So, the multiplexer, shortened to MOX or MPX, is a combinational logic circuit designed to switch one of several input lines through to a single common output line by the application of a control signal. So, this is the figure of the multiplexer. So, this is the 2 is to 1 multiplexer. So, wherein we have two inputs and also we have the one output which is uh, in this case uh, we have the result of z is equal to i0 multiplied by s bar plus i1 multiplied by s so s is the select input or the control input So, multiplexers or MOOCs can be either digital circuits made from high-speed logic gates used to switch digital or binary data, or they can be analog types using transistors, MOSFETs, or relays to switch one of the voltage or current inputs through to a single output. So, we have a two-input multiplexer design. So, the input A of this simple 2 is to 1 line multiplexer circuit constructed from standard NAND gates acts to control which input I0 or I1 gets passed to the output at Q. So we have this figure of 2 is to 1 uh, input multiplexer design. So from the truth table, when the data select input A is low at logic 0, input I1 passes its data through the NAND gate multiplexer circuit to the output while input I0 is blocked. So when the data select A is high at logic 1, the reverse happens and now input I0 passes data to the output Q while input I1 is then blocked. So, by the application of either a logic 0 or a logic 1 at A, so we can select the appropriate input I0 or I1 with the circuit acting a bit like a single pole, double throw, or SPDT switch. So next, let's define what is the Domino Logic CMOS. So Domino Logic CMOS is a design style that eliminates the cascading problem in dynamic CMOS logic. So placing an inverter between dynamic gates to convert the falling output into a monotonally rising signal for the next gate. So, in a domino CMOS logic, a dynamic CMOS logic is cascaded with a static CMOS inverter. So, this is the generalized circuit diagram of a domino CMOS logic gate. So, consider the generalized circuit diagram of a domino CMOS logic gate. So, a dynamic CMOS logic stage is cascaded with a static CMOS inverter stage. So, the addition of the inverter allows us to operate a number of such structures in cascade, as explained in the following. So, during the pre-charge phase, so this is the pre-charge phase. So, 
when the clock is equal to zero, the output node of the dynamic CMOS stage is precharged to a high logical level. And the output of the CMOS inverter buffer becomes low. So when the clock signal rises at the beginning of the evaluation phase, there are two possibilities. So the output node of the dynamic CMOS stage is either discharged to a low level through the NMOS circuitry or 1 to 0 transition or it remains high. Consequently, the inverter output voltage can also make at most one transition during the evaluation phase from 0 to 1. So regardless of the input voltages applied to the dynamic CMOS stage, it is not possible for the buffer output to make a 1 to 0 transition during the evaluation phase. So a domino logic offers a simple technique to eliminate the need of complex clocking scheme by utilizing a single phase clock and have no static power consumption as it is removed by the clock input in the first stage. So now, what is the basic structure of the domino logic? So this is the example of the cascaded domino CMOS logic gates. And also, this one is the cascaded domino CMOS logic gates with static CMOS logic gates. Okay? So, the difference of these two figures is this figure has the static gates. So, the domino circuit operates in two clock phases. So, in the first phase, the clock uh, recharges the output via a PMOS transistor to a high state or one. So, this is called the precharge phase. So, this one is the precharge phase. So, in the second phase, the NMOS logic decides if the output should be at a low state or zero or kept at the high state or one. So, this is called the evaluation phase. So, this is the evaluation phase. So, compared to the static CMOS circuit using dual NMOS and PMOS transistors to implement the logic. So, the domino circuit has the advantages of faster speed and smaller layout because the domino uses fewer PMOS transistors. So, but... Uh, the domino circuit needs special local clock distribution and consumes more power. Okay, so this is an 8 input complex logic gate using conventional CMOS logic. And the other one is the domino CMOS logic. So domino CMOS logic gates allow a significant reduction in the number of transistors required to realize any complex Boolean function. So, the implementation of the 8 input Boolean function, Z is equal to AB plus quantity C plus D multiplied with another quantity E plus F plus GH. Using standard CMOS and domino CMOS as shown in these two figures. So, where the reduction of circuit complexity is still obvious. So the distribution of the clock signal within the system is quite straightforward since a single clock can be used to precharge and evaluate to a number of cascaded stages as long as the signal propagation delay from the first stage to the last stage does not exceed the time span of the evaluation phase. So the total number or transistor counts for the conventional CMOS logic is 18. Okay, so as we count this uh, number of transistors, uh, we have the total of 18. So, 8 for the pull-up network. So, 8 for the pull-up network. Another 8 for the pull-down network. And 2 for the inverter. So, while for the domino CMOS logic, it has the total of 12 transistors count. So, 1 for the... MP or the pre-charge PMOS transistor. Another one is for the MN or for the evaluation NMOS transistor. And then 8 for the pull-down network transistor. And the 2 for the inverter. For the total of 12 transistor counts. So now, this is the properties of domino 
CMOS logic. So first, with the use of static CMOS inverter at the output stage, noise immunity increases because the fan out of the gate is driven by the static inverter with low impedance output. Since each stage must be connected by static CMOS inverter, only non-inverting logic can be implemented. So charge sharing and charge leakage exist during evaluation phase. So the number of transistors required to implement N input logic is N plus 4. So the cascading problem in dynamic CMOS logic can be avoided by using domino CMOS logic. So now, why is it called domino? So we can add an even number of static CMOS inverting uh, logic gates after a domino logic stage prior to the next domino logic stage. So in the cascaded domino logic structure, the evaluation of each stage ripples through the cascaded stages similar to a chain of dominoes. So from which it takes the name called domino. Okay, because uh, it behaves uh, like falling dominoes. So, even number of inverting stages guarantees that inputs to the second domino logic stage experience only 0 to 1 transitions. So, since uh, 1 to 0 transitions may cause an erroneous logic level, so the evaluate cycle must be of sufficient duration to allow all cascaded logic stages between latches. Okay, so to complete their evaluation process within the clock evaluation interval. So the function or the process of the domino logic structure is the same as the behavior of the uh, domino. Next, let's proceed for the advantages and disadvantages of the domino logic. So first for the advantages, so first, it has extremely fast circuits. The next allows much faster switching frequencies. So some of the fastest processors use domino logic gates in a full custom design process. So domino logic was used in 1990s by Intel. So next, it, uh, the advantage is the inverters enable easy use of level restorers. And the other one is the fairly small area, at least N plus 4 transistors. Next, for the disadvantages, first, only non-inverting logic can be implemented. So, the limitation is that the number of inverting static logic stages in cascade must be even so that the inputs of the next domino CMOS stage experience only 0 to 1 transitions during the evaluation. So, we have possible fixes for this uh, disadvantage. So, the first one is by using the Morgan or other logic transformation. The other one is by using differential logic or the dual rail. The third one is by using NPCMOS or the zipper or NORA. Okay, so this is the circuit tree or schematic of the differential or dual rail domino. So, it solves problem of non-inverting logic. So, high is equal to performance to use in microprocessors. And ration, or even with the cross-coupled PMOS, and it has high power consumption. Always a transition. So, next, for the NPCMOS or zipper, only 0 to 1 transitions at inputs of pull-down network, only 1 to 0 transitions at inputs of pull-up network, and the advantage is it allows extremely dense logic. And the last one is the NPC MOS, which is called the NORA or uh, no race. So it is careful with sizing PUN to match PDN delay. So and reduce noise margins. So another one for the disadvantages of, of the domino logic is the circuits are usually larger than static CMOS. And other one is the requires full custom design process. And another one is the resolving timing noise issues requires. And last, it has higher power consumption than CMOS. Okay, so next. So for the sizing. 
Okay, so we have this schematic. So this schematic is from the electric uh, software. Okay, so first we have the uh, pre-charge phase. So we're in we have the uh, one transistor. This design is using uh, two is to one uh, multiplexers. Okay. So now uh, we have the PMOS of width is equal to 1.6 microns and length of 0.35 microns. And another one is for the NMOS, we have the width of 0.8 microns and length of 0.35 microns. So since uh, this is the 2 is to 1, so we have the x value of 2. So thus, 2 uh, multiplied by 0.8 microns, so we have the 1.6 microns. So this 1.6 microns will be used for this uh, one transistor under the uh, pull-up network. So for the pre-charge phase. Next. So for the uh, pull-down network, Okay, so we have the uh, equivalent to 1. So 1 over 1 over x plus 1 over x is equal to 1. So since this uh, transistor is in series, so we use this formula. Okay, so therefore, x will be is equal to 2. So thus, 2 multiplied by 0.8 microns is equal to 1.6 microns per node block. So, since the first block has two transistors in series parallel connection, thus, so 1 over 1 over x plus 1 over x is equal to 2. So, therefore, x is equal to 4. Thus, 4 multiplied by 0.8 microns is equal to 3.2 microns. So, therefore, so for the schematic diagram, okay, so we have this uh, equivalent truth uh, table. So, for the schematic diagram, we have the input A and input B. And we have the select S and the input supply voltage is 5.5 volts. Also, we use the transient analysis for the data. Okay. So, this is the complete uh, schematic diagram of the uh, domino logic using the 2 is to 1 multiplexer. So, after doing the schematic diagram, so the result of the simulation is this. This is the simulation result. So, I use a uh, WinSpy software for the graphical representation. And as we observed, so the result of the graphical representation is the same on what we seen in on the truth table. Okay, so domino logic is solving issue of cascading, but it falls in another problem, which is a race. So another method will be discussed to solve this race issue. Okay, so that's it for the uh, domino logic. Uh, using the 2 is to 1 multiplexers. So, thank you for watching and thank you for listening. God bless.